On this day last year, I said, I'm gonna live in a van next year. And that is exactly what I did. I also got up to a few other things this year. From weeks hiking, seeing some of the world's most beautiful places, to exploring the depths of the ocean and some of its best kept secrets, 2018 was a year of discovery, challenges, and incredible adventure. Ever since I took a month long solo road trip down the coast a few years ago, I've wanted to see what doing that type of adventure long term would be like. So this time last year, I left my cozy basement suite in Vancouver for a life on the road. I quickly learned that winter in Canada is maybe not the best time to try buying a camper van. It's hard to find a vehicle at this time of year in, in Alberta. While waiting for the spring to come to buy a van, I thought I'd have some fun in the snow by trying my hand at dog sledding through the Canadian Rocky Mountains. My friends Chase and Stephanie joined on a blistery crossing of the Spray Lakes Passage. If only we all could have as much energy as those dogs to go for a winter run. While in the Rockies, we joined forces with Tour Canmore to go on some other epic adventures during our time there. Next on the list, caving. We crawled and squeezed 19 stories down into the earth through tight passages and crevasses, ending up in some of the most jaw-dropping natural galleries and rooms in Rat's Nest Cave. This is a very special place. I'm very glad we got to come here. Apparently that wasn't enough caving for me, so my other friends David and Samantha and I took it to the next level and went on a nerve-wracking midnight solo expedition into a less explored cave system hidden deep in the endless canyon valleys of the Canadian Rockies. Now this was an experience I will not forget. Fast forward to spring. It's now prime time for camper van shopping. My friends Alexander and Janessa let me tag along in their camper van for a weekend of adventure in the mountains with our other friend, Laura. This experience traveling around in the camper was the tipping point for me. I said within 30 days, I will be on the road in my own van. No questions. Not a week later, I was signing the papers to my own brand new camper van. And by brand new, I mean a very much so used 30 year old camper, but the price was right and it was in incredible condition for its age. My friend Ryan helped outfit the van to get it road ready for my ever nearing departure date. We spent days optimizing the engine, upgrading old parts, and testing the van, making sure it was up to the task. I put on my own finishing touches to the van, and finally, on June 15th, 2018, I began my first day living as a full-time van lifer. I drove straight to Canmore for my first job working out of the van for Chris, the owner of Tour Canmore. I joined him and his crew on an epic three-day rafting expedition down the Kootenai River to film an advertisement for their company. For three days, we rode the rapids through some of the most beautiful and remote parts of the Rockies while sleeping under the stars and enjoying one of the most quintessentially Canadian experiences one could possibly imagine. Before continuing my adventure on the road towards the coast, I spent another week in Canmore, enjoying the relaxing pace of this small mountain town. On my way to Vancouver, my goal was to find the most beautiful places to park every night. And let me tell you, there were some pretty incredible places that I got to call home in that first month, but they didn't come without a price. Getting to some of those remote and off the grid spots meant putting the van through and across some pretty rough terrain that it was not built for. And I knew this but the intrigue of the unknown took control and the van went places likely no other 1989 GMC Vanguard Vendura has gone. Most times the van made it through, other times it didn't. So after a few too many close calls, I put the extreme view locations on hold and decided to head to Vancouver. There I learned how to sail for the first time with my cousin Oliver. He showed me the ropes, literally, of what it takes to sail the high seas. I then met up with some of my Vancouver friends, Bria and Carly, and explored some of the city's most beautiful natural hidden gems and enjoyed the warm weather. We then jumped into the van and took the ferry over to Vancouver Island to learn how to surf. This proved to be a bit harder than it looks, but we had a lot of fun. We got to see Tofino from the ocean and saw a bunch of wildlife from the boat. We also took a float plane over the coastline to get a better idea of the landscape 
and to see just how rugged and raw this place really is. We enjoyed our last night in Tofino, and in the morning I was left to continue my solo adventure on the island. I spent the next two weeks here on the water trying to improve my surfing skills. I started making some pretty good progress and started getting the hang of it. The time came to leave Tofino. My bank account was starting to feel the strain of traveling and all the upgrades to the van. It was time to start making some money again. My plan was to work as a traveling film director focusing on remote gigs for travel and tourism productions. Being on the road and not having the resources I had last year as a director, I needed to find jobs where I could work by myself and travel at the same time. My first job ended up being directing a music video in Cabo San Lucas in Mexico for the pop duo Genesia. We had nine days to film their video for their big rebrand release the next month. We had some pretty big scenes to film with dancers and choreographers where we had to shut down a portion of the resort to film. This was pretty cool. We traveled all over the city to film different portions of the video, and this was a really great way to get to know the city. We got to have some fun there too. We explored Cabo with our friend Kevin, and even ended up winning a limbo contest. That was a fun night. We also took a day to get our adrenaline fill, where we rode ATVs on the beach for an afternoon, and ripped around in the desert for a few hours before ziplining across a massive canyon. We then went bungee jumping off a gondola, and I took a thrilling swing through the canyon with Alexander. To top the day off, we rode camels through the hot desert. My next job was completely different, filming promo videos for the US Air Force, the Canadian Armed Forces, and the Nebraska National Guard. I spent a couple weeks filming various rescue and battle simulations for their advertisement purposes. This was a pretty intense few weeks of work. Other than that, I had a few more tours and productions and music videos throughout the year. But when I was back home for gigs, I made sure to get on some good hikes with my friends. The most memorable hike this year was a four-day trek into the Fryat Valley with Alexander to find a hidden cave with no known coordinates we could find anywhere. This ended up being one of the most beautiful hikes that I've ever been on. We gained so much elevation in those days that we were in snow by the end, in the middle of a very hot summer. On our last day of searching, we finally found the cave. This was a very rewarding day. I made it back to Vancouver Island and bombed around a bit more in the van before having my last adventure of the year there. I met up with my friend Bria again and we explored a shipwreck of an old destroyer vessel that sunk just off the coast of the island. We dove down to the wreck and ventured into some of the old sleeping and working quarters. 188 soldiers once worked on this massive ship. Even its cannons and guns were still intact on its deck. This was a very eerie and eye-opening experience. We even got a few otherworldly visitors pay us a visit. A great Pacific octopus actually tried to steal our dive light. I spent the last month of the year back in Vancouver doing some hikes and learning how to spend the holidays living in a van by myself. I am now coming up to 200 days living in my van. There have been many challenges and hard weeks where I honestly felt like giving up. But with every challenge, something is learned. I've learned how to be a bit more handy, how to fix things on the fly, and make use of what I have. I've learned that living in a van isn't easy. It's actually a lot harder than I thought, but it is by far the most freeing thing that I have ever done. It has allowed me to completely follow what drives me and reminds me daily that there is so much to see in the world. The biggest lesson that this year has taught me is to collect moments rather than things and to appreciate the people that you have in your life. The best moments in life are meant to be shared. Thank you for watching this year's recap video. I think it's important to look back and appreciate what the year had in store and what can be made better in the next. If you liked this video, consider checking out last year's video too, where I spent 150 days straight road tripping across Canada, doing the top 300 best things to do in the country and a lot more international travel too. From free diving with wild beluga whales in the Arctic Ocean, exploring the world's largest non-polar glacier, to living with a very welcoming traditional family in the mountainous jungle region of Haiti, last year was a wild one. Everything I talked about in this video has its own dedicated adventure video right here on the Mile 30 Adventures channel. Check out my other videos and playlists to watch those. If you liked this video, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel to see my future van life and other adventure videos. So without further ado, 2019, 
Here we come. 